Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Clive Myrie in the news this week. In Liverpool, as the government prepares to unveil the successor to the Royal Yacht Britannia, a civil servant gently whispers to the cameraman, it's the one on the left. At a branch of Ikea, a member of staff is taking longer than usual to find the brackets for the Billy bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> and in a Swansea primary school, after failing to land a part in a 2020 nativity play this year, Rex makes it to the dress rehearsal before he's finally rumbled. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a writer for the Sunday Times who says she's unable to lie. Neither can I. So, on the team with the man with the terrible tie, please welcome <laughs> Camilla Long. <laughs> on Paul's team tonight is an actor and comedian who once appeared on stage as David Tomlinson, the actor who played Mr Banks in Mary Poppins. Sadly, his wife couldn't attend the premiere as they couldn't find a nanny. <laughs> Please welcome Miles Jupp. <laughs> now we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Camilla. Have a look at this. Oh, it's the three wise men. Well, the <laughs> two. <laughs> uh, uh, it's a new variant virus. Let it snow. Let it. <laughs> ah, small prick. Don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that's the new Christmas decorations. We're all encouraged to hang one up just in case we go under the mistletoe. Yeah, well, don't do that because you're not allowed to snog under the mistletoe anymore. No, no snogging? Yeah, hold back. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, just before I came out, I saw that the Sag has reversed this and said you can snog cautiously under the mistletoe. <laughs> like, which I think sums up the whole thing, really. But you're, you're, not, you're not allowed to be kissed under the baubles, apparently. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> we've got this new variant and we've got to wait and find out yeah. what happens. Yeah, you're right, absolutely, Ian. Yes, it's the coronavirus part five, the comeback Omicron. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how you say it? Yeah. Well, the BBC pronunciation unit says it's Omicron. Mary Beard, classic scholar, of course, says it should be Omicron. That's Mary Beard. <laughs> <laughs> Some slightly stupid people, apparently, on the internet are saying that there's a... There's hidden... slightly stupid people on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some slightly stupid people on the internet are saying that there's a hidden code in the name. What's that, do you think? It's an anagram of moronic. <laughs> <laughs> Close. They say Omicron B is an anagram of no crimbo. <laughs> It's not called Omicron B. They've put the B in mm. to make the anagram work. Yeah. Exactly. It would work if there was a B in Omicron, but there isn't, as Gino de Campo, famous classic scholar, says. <laughs> if my grandmother had wheels, she would have been a bike. <laughs> Gino de Campo said the thing about his grandmother, or he said the thing about classics. I got. He okay. said the thing about his grandmother. Oh, I see. Which is. Uh... Well, it's not relevant, is it? But it's... Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's called a joke, Miles. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not my sort of thing, Clive. No. <laughs> like you, I'm all about reading stuff off cards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. The Who have decided to name variants after the ancient Greek alphabet. Yeah. They avoided calling the variants Chi, cos that would suggest that they all came from China. <laughs> I, I'm just saying... <laughs> the whole point of this was so that we didn't say, look, this is the, the Kent variant. So people in Kent, like myself, would think, well, thanks a lot. Are you sure people were calling you the Kent variant, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit spiky tonight, aren't you, Miles? I don't know what's yeah. going on. Are you going to have a go at next? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm as appalled as anyone. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, isn't it great to have the old gang back together again? <laughs> the ghosts of Christmas past. <laughs>
The new rules on coronavirus include face masks, being back on public transport and in shops. Who's not very happy about the return of masks? Some people have got very cross saying that asking you to wear a mask occasionally on public transport in a shop is more or less the equivalent of a fascist dictatorship. <laughs> <laughs> and Britain literally has gone overnight from a nice, pleasant liberal place <laughs> to... Essentially, it's the gulag. <laughs> Isn't that a kind of Hungarian soup? <laughs> <laughs> so, who thinks mask wearing is not only anti-freedom, but pointless? Piers Corbyn. Yeah, it was oh, yeah. Piers Corbyn. And he made up this catchy tune to sing on the underground while ripping off wear a mask stickers on a tube train. Do you know, wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. Wearing a mask is like trying to keep a fart in your trousers. There's a point where that video seemed to turn into a film called Zombie Uproar. <laughs> I think wearing a mask is easier than trying to keep a fart in your trousers. <laughs> well, why wouldn't you want to keep a fart in your own trousers? That's their idea of freedom. Okay. Is <laughs> just let the fart out into your face. <laughs> it's, it's what they fought for. It is. <laughs> who has reassured the nation that it's all gonna be okay? I can't think of a single person who's reassured the nation. Ah, well, someone was confident enough to make this declaration in the Mail on Sunday. People stop me in the street and ask, will we be OK? My answer is a resounding yes. But oh, Matt Hancock. Guess? It is Matt Hancock. Well done, Ian. Can I just point out that I work for the BBC and I'm completely balanced and my opinion of Matt Hancock is unchanged. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so why was uh, Matt Hancock urgently called to Parliament this week? Oh, he Any wasn't. Ideas? Apparently yeah. he was, to answer the, a question raised by Labour's Annalise Dodds on the awarding of a Covid contract to his local pub landlord. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here's what he said in the Commons. Because I've heard this point about this uh, pub landlord, and I just want to tell her and the House and put it formally on the record, and after this, I hope the Labour Party will also stop this slur, that this, the man in question, the gentleman in question, never got nor applied for a contract from the government or the NHS at all. It is a fabrication pushed by the Labour Party. It's a load of rubbish. And there's a man you trust. <laughs> well, however, an investigation by The Guardian found that pub landlord Matthew Bourne's company, Hinpack, was subcontracted for the Covid work to a supplier already approved by the NHS, and that this agreement was signed by a civil servant on Matt Hancock's behalf, in which it stipulated that all the work would be subcontracted to Hinback. That's so shocking. So he didn't tell the truth? <laughs> does, does that mean we might not be OK? <laughs> <laughs> So, around which seasonal activity are mixed messages? Circular? Christmas parties. Yes. Yes, yes. Christmas parties. parties. Yes, Ooh, one government yes. scientist, that's right, Dr Jenny Harris, is urging us to minimise socialising, whereas Boris Johnson is urging us not to cancel parties, or, as the Daily Star put it, stop all that carrying on right now. There's no reason to call off the canoodling. <laughs> Words that I haven't heard for years, like snogging. I haven't heard snogging yeah, for a long I mean... time, not in public, but canoodling is another one. But on, on the BBC Breakfast, they were worried about snogging, so one of the um, presenters started talking about oral activity. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> if you're talking about mixed messages, I thought that you were referring to the fact that we discovered that there'd been loads of parties at Downing Street about a year ago. Yes. Mm. When they weren't meant to be having parties. It was around about the time the Track and Trace app had gone so badly wrong, hadn't it? And it, um, I think it, it sort of messed around with various sat-nav things. Anyway, it turned out that number 10 had been flagged up as a dogging hotspot. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not no you're not normally like this. <laughs> <laughs> You've not been out of the house much. <laughs> 
What has the Sun discovered about what's in store for office partygoers this Christmas? Many firms are curtailing certain activities. Oh, yes, and, and no photocopying your bottom. That's every year, though. <laughs> We have lost what sort so of country have we become where you can't <laughs> find a We're going to hell, Ian. Nice We're going to hell. Is that what the Honestly. private eye Christmas party's like, Ian? Just continue. <laughs> <laughs> they do a brass rubbing of each other's bottoms at <laughs> <of> private eye. <laughs> There's an allegation that the government didn't cancel many parties last year, and this is what you mentioned, Camilla, even in the middle of lockdown. So, just explain the story again. I think in, even in, in November, when everybody was in full lockdown, I think they were still having leaving parties and um, sort of, I don't know, sleepovers and, you know, <laughs> pyjama parties and Secret Santa and, you know, Twister and, and stuff like that. At Downing Street, it was basically a massive orgy. <laughs> and we were all sitting at home... Looking through the window. Crying. <laughs> Why can't they do the decent thing during the lockdown and drive to Barnard Castle? <laughs> <laughs> Which traditional event is the government trying to save? It's a school nativity play. Oh. Yes, yeah, some schools are going ahead with the play but are asking parents not to attend. <laughs> <laughs> well, Boris Johnson did the annual switch on of the Downing Street Christmas lights. How did that go? Very well. <laughs> well, let's take a look. Are you very excited about Christmas? Yeah! Do you think this Christmas is going to be considerably better than last Christmas? Yeah! OK, are you ready? Let's count down from five. That's the electricity supply this winter. <laughs> uh, a requirement for double vaccination has come from an unusual place this week. Do you know where? Orkney. Uh, <laughs> it's Germany. There's a requirement to be double vaccinated for anyone intending to use a euthanasia clinic. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one of the symptoms? You have a press meter lung. <laughs> <laughs> what can you buy in Australia to help you express your opposition to vaccinations? Oh, it's a Piers Corbin doll. <laughs> Actually, it's a man in Victoria who's selling from his Facebook page a prosthetic rubber arm, which he says you can use to fool the nurse <laughs> into not giving you the vaccine in your actual <laughs> arm. Yeah, that's this, it. This man has no pulse. <laughs> <laughs> you could also wear a fake arm to a euthanasia clinic. <laughs> Trick them into thinking that they're putting you out of your misery, and they're not. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Omicron variant, which, just like last year, could threaten families' plans to meet up over the festive period. Boris Johnson was criticised after 50 people attended a boozy Christmas party at Downing Street during last year's lockdown. Keir Starmer is in the clear as he also threw a party, but no one turned up. <laughs> <laughs> the annual Trafalgar Square Christmas tree has been widely mocked for its threadbare appearance. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's normally donated by Norway, but this year it appears to have been donated by Chernobyl. <laughs> It, it might be it might be Fred Bear, but it's an impressive fairy on the top of it. <laughs> <laughs> right, Paul and Miles. Oh yes. Take a look at this. This is a severe storm which affected a lot of people, mainly in the north, Scotland as well. Some mime uh, artists, they were they were struggling as a result. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this was a pub, as it says there, Britain's <laughs> highest pub. Uh, had Britain's highest drinkers for four days because they were, <laughs> there was a lock-in, and so they stayed for about four days and they had a good time apparently. After going to see an Oasis tribute band at the Tan Hill Inn in the Yorkshire Dales on Friday night, dozens of guests got trapped in the pub for three days by the heavy snow. All they needed was a bit of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of sunshine to clear the paths. Some people tune in thinking that this is the news. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
according to one guest, the blizzards, <laughs> the blizzards were absolutely horrendous. They must have been the support <laughs> act. <laughs> During their three-day and four stay in the Yorkshire pub, some customers spent as much as five pounds at the bar. <laughs> Live, but they got out. They've been rescued, yes. There yes. was a tribute ambulance service going past. <laughs> 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 what was the silver lining for the guests? Silver lining? There was a silver lining. Um, <laughs> well, uh, it was warm, there was alcohol, there was companionship. Yeah, yeah. Well, apparently, it was a Queen tribute act that had been booked for the Saturday, which meant the pub was well stocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, she does like a tipple. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any incidents at the pub? Well, presumably the brothers who lead No Aces fell out eventually. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing kicked off. The pool yeah. table got turned over. Yeah. One of them started snorting snow. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would we do if there was a blizzard and we were all stuck inside the studio for three days? What do you think? I suspect you'd do a Liam Gallagher impression. Sunshine! <laughs> Was Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were doing Reginald Maudlin. <laughs> I think for balance you should do some blur impressions as well. <laughs> <laughs> what televisual casualties of the storm were there? Oh, Anton Deck's uh, glorious program, I'm a celebrity, give me some money. <laughs> What damage occurred on the set? Richard Maidley. <laughs> he was blown inside out, wasn't he? <laughs> he was taken to hospital with dehydration or something like that, and he said, I woke up, you know, talking nonsense and babbling, and I'm like, what change is that? <laughs> <laughs> What's the difference? According to the Mirror, Storm Arwen caused over £1 million worth of damage to the I'm a Celebrity set. Just imagine the damage a storm could do to this set. It yeah. could run into tens of pounds. <laughs> From one storm to another, what controversy did Keir Starmer create this week? He had a reshuffle, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And who did this come as a surprise to? Angela Rayner, the deputy. Yeah, she was informed of it an hour before she was due to make a speech on Tory Sleaze. Is that a radio it? station? <laughs> <laughs> on Tory Sleaze. Tory Sleaze. Tune in to Tory Sleaze. <laughs> 24 hours a day. <laughs> it's the home of sleazy listening. <laughs> Thank you very much. Nice. <laughs> Lovely. Nice. Let's hear it on Times Radio. Yes. Denying that Keir Starmer was about to undertake a reshuffle two hours before he did. You famously weren't much consulted the last time you had a go at that. Uh, have you been consulted on plans for a reshuffle? No, I'm not aware of any plans for a reshuffle. I haven't been consulted, so I don't think there's any, you know, focus on that at the moment. You know, everyone's been focused on holding the government to account and, you know, trying to get to the point where, you know, government ministers and the prime minister do the right thing by the country rather than, you know, setting us up to, to fail, you know. You'd hear about it first, wouldn't you, as well, if there was going to be one? I reckon that Keira would tell me first, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that she says the word, you know, a lot. <laughs> and she's the only person who doesn't know anything. <laughs> what was the main reason given for the reshuffle? To annoy and to <laughs> rape. <laughs> so why was Keir Starmer branded idiotic, pathetic and childish this week? What, for, for putting lots of sensible people yeah. back in the shadow cabinet? <laughs> Just well, really according annoying. to the I, the leader's office issued a save-the-date notice for a Christmas drinks party jointly hosted by Sakia and his shadow chancellor, Rachel Reeves, but not his deputy, Angela Rayner. Oh, it's very bitchy, isn't it? It is. It's like um, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> 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 Which one's the Vivian? Who's Vivian, Clive? You've never seen RuPaul's Drag Race. Ian refuses to watch it after he was eliminated in the first round. <laughs> You won't have anything to do with it. <laughs> Will a reshuffle and a thrust to the right help to save Keir Starmer's bacon, do you think? Well, let's hear what some voters thought when asked if they had a message for Keir Starmer. <laughs> Sarah, your message to Keir Starmer. He needs to give up the ghost <laughs> and make way for somebody else. Des? Get a personality, I will leave. <laughs> cool. uh, uh, pff, goodbye. 
Well, that's the spirit that'll make Britain what it is today. <laughs> <laughs> If it does all go pear-shaped for Kia, how might he be able to fill the hours after he's gone? Some hobby that's been uh, revealed? Well, it's by taking a leaf out of Alan Johnson's book and appearing on Steph's packed lunch. <laughs> right, we better go before we see Alan's Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he used to be somebody in the government? <laughs> <laughs> He's one of, like, three of the great officers of state, isn't he? No, he was in the government, wasn't he? was he? the Chancellor at yeah, one he point, was, wasn't he? Yeah. I think he was big. They'll <laughs> 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 have a hard job selling that chair after this. <laughs> I saw Alan the other week. He seemed perfectly normal. I met him at a literary <laughs> festival and he... Oh, no, he was naked, actually. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sudden winter storm which caught residents unprepared and the sudden Labour reshuffle which did the same to Angela Rayner. Shadow Minister Lisa Nandy ducked a question about the rift between Keir Starmer and Angela Rayner, saying, the leader makes the decisions, the gaffer picks the team, that's how it goes and that's how it has always gone. Adding, I'm over the moon, it's three points in the bag, <laughs> we're taking it one game at a time. <laughs> <laughs> the Labour reshuffle saw the much-heralded return of Yvette Cooper, according to The Times. At the Shadow Cabinet meeting that followed, Cooper led a session on how Labour can develop a positive message. That's Yvette Cooper, minister during Gordon Brown's demise. A key face in Ed Miliband's failed bid for power and loser in a leadership election against Jeremy Corbyn. Yes, Labour are back. <laughs> <laughs> also this week, Priti Patel claims her immigration policy is designed to fast-track the careers of the brightest and the best. So, yet again, it's one rule for everyone except the Cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> So, at the end of that round, Paul and Miles, you have two points, and Ian and Camilla, you have two points. Very good. <laughs> and so, to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Judging by the symbol on the right-hand side, it's Russian. Is it a Russian surveillance thing? Mm -hmm. They're going uh, yeah, to send a rock round to spy on people. Yeah, this is the news that Russia has found an ingenious new way to spy on its enemies. Are it's gonna... a spy rock. Spy rock? Spy rock, yeah. So what special capabilities do you think the spy rock possesses? It can spy on anybody that walks near it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. It runs on Caterpillar tracks and has a periscope-style camera. It also has a microphone, a battery life of 15 hours and can be controlled remotely from over a mile away. Here it is in action. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's the uh, wrong picture. <laughs> there it is. That's it. There you go. Well, there I you mean, go. you'd have to... <laughs> now we're talking, man. Now we're talking. It's less mobile than a tortoise. <laughs> I mean, surely the only thing it's going to pick up is people saying, is that rock moving? <laughs> <laughs> well, rocks aside, there are rising tensions along the border between Russia and Ukraine, with Ukraine claiming that Russia is planning an invasion within the next few months. Who's going to come to the rescue? I think no one. <laughs> I think that's the worry. Actually, it's Liz Truss. Right. She's coming to the rescue, yeah. Well, in a tank? Yeah. She's warned Putin that invading Ukraine would be a strategic mistake. And to prove the point, she's got herself one of these. <laughs> wow. That's the entire British army. <laughs> <laughs> so what poll has Liz Truss topped lately? She's the most popular person in the Conservative Party. Yeah. Is she? <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. I just love her so much. Paul, you're laughing. It's true. I know. It just shows you what the rest of them must be like. <laughs> it's because she's so charismatic, isn't it? <laughs> it is, the way she sort of says things like pork markets. Yes. Yeah. Sort of, <laughs> she sucks pork people. markets. Yes. It's just so winsome. Yeah. It's her version of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> sunshine. When it, <laughs> when it all goes a little bit quiet, it can say... <laughs> 
Christmas party. She just shouts, pork market! <laughs> Truss was voted the most popular cabinet minister in a survey of Conservative Party members with a net satisfaction rating of 82.3%. In the same survey, <laughs> Boris Johnson came second last. <laughs> with a rating of minus 17.2%. Now, we told you last week how one donor stumped up £35,000 to play cricket with Rishi Sunak, whilst another at the same event paid £22,000 for karaoke with Liz Truss. But what did Dominic Raab manage to raise? Eight Any pounds ideas? for something. Bang on! Camilla, according to the Sunday Times, at a recent auction by Surrey Conservatives, two books by Dominic Raab fetched a princely eight <laughs> pounds. What's he written books about? How to kill a man and get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere in the world, what unusual restriction has Kim Jong-un recently imposed on the citizens of North Korea? They've got to keep a fart in their trousers. <laughs> <laughs> He's banned them from wearing leather coats because too many people are copying his signature look. <laughs> yeah, he was, he was pictured in 2019 in this leather coat. <laughs> Fetching number there. After which, people began importing vast amounts of fake leather to make their own versions. And according to reports, actual fashion police <laughs> are patrolling the streets to confiscate the jackets from sellers and any citizens sporting the look. Bad news for the Fonzie's upcoming holiday in Pyongyang. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the news that Russia has found an ingenious new way to spy on its enemies. Worryingly, there have been a lot of sightings of these. Spy rocks in the vicinity of Salisbury <laughs> Cathedral. <laughs> Russia recently unveiled their new spy rock. Worried British spies have realised that their scissors will be useless against the rock. <laughs> <laughs> and are now hoping to beat it by deploying some paper. <laughs> also this week, according to The Times, North Korea has introduced new punishments for anyone caught entering the country illegally, including the harshest punishment of all, they're allowed in. <laughs> Fingers on the buzzers, teams. I think this must be the case against the Mail on yeah. Sunday, which the Duchess of Sussex has won the, the latest round in many, many rounds. And they found in her favour, saying that the paper had been wrong to print a half of a letter she'd sent to her father. Bang on. And she was also accused of wearing an aromatic candle. <laughs> it's wearing the what? Archie Well. <laughs> it helps if you look at the picture, Clive. All right. <laughs> Otherwise, it might sound a bit <laughs> stupid. I was looking at like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Camilla, you're absolutely right. The three judges, including Lord Justice Bean, ruled in favour of <laughs> Meghan. <laughs> and said that the contents of the letter were personal, private and not matters of legitimate public interest. Sticking with the royals, what has the Queen banned the rest of her family from playing this Christmas? Oh... I think it was Monopoly, wasn't it? Yes, Camilla, Monopoly. According to the Mirror, the board game is off the cards because it gets too vicious and causes arguments. Bit of a scrabble for the get-out-of-jail-free card. For <laughs> <laughs> OK, what did the Queen lose this week? Barbados. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes she lost Barbados. Prince Charles was sent to oversee the severing of the nation's ties with the monarchy. Here he is doing his bit. He's just within reach of taking over from his mother, and there's nothing to take over. <laughs> I just... Why would you turn up to a ceremony where somebody's basically telling you to fuck off? <laughs> it's oh. just, just old-fashioned British good it's manners. Just, yes. <laughs> turn up. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Charles was guest of honour at the ceremony marking the transition, but who was he upstaged by? They wheeled out real royalty, i.e. Rihanna who is obviously the most yep. bo famous Barbadian in the world. Indeed, yes. The pop star Rihanna, who was greeted with rapturous applause, far louder than anything that had greeted Prince Charles. Not only a pop star, Rihanna also has her own clothing range, but why have her pyjamas caused a bit of a stir recently? 
Yeah, Ian, why? <laughs> I don't know, they seem very comfortable to me. <laughs> wow! Well, well it'll be, yes, I think... Here they are from the front, looking pretty formal, whilst at the back she seems to have run out of a bit of fabric. <laughs> Try keeping a fart in those trousers, please. <laughs> Yes, this is Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, who has won her legal battle against the Mail on Sunday. The ruling means that Meghan will once again be free to continue to invade her own privacy. <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Just one between you this week. Lucian Freud, Matt Doran, an employee at Swale Council, and snooker player Mark Williams. Uh, uh, no, you have to press that. That's the one that makes the noise. <laughs> <laughs> um, Matt Doran was the journalist who went to interview Adele and he flew from Australia to interview her over here but during the interview it transpired that he hadn't listened to her new album and uh, he wasn't allowed to use the interview. Mark Williams... He fell asleep recently during a snooker match. He was the one sitting in the chair, not the one at... He didn't... <laughs> <laughs> he, but he, yeah, and he, and he admitted, yeah, I did fall asleep, I've got long Covid... I've basically got sort of snooker-induced narcolepsy now. <laughs> <laughs> the symptom, everyone has long COVID gets that, but only snooker players notice it, of yeah. course. It's, <laughs> people think they're asymptomatic, but they're just not playing enough snooker. <laughs> <laughs> so he admitted, didn't he, that he'd, yeah. he'd fallen as, asleep. He's fallen and he asleep. admitted it. Mark Doran made the mistake. She said, which track do you like most on my album? And it, you know, he could have just made it up, said... Oh, the one where you go, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's a wonder she's so successful. <laughs> I reckon the odd one out is Lucian Freud. The others have admitted to things. He there was recently did lots of nude portraits, and there was one he said, that is not me. He said, that's not me. And other people said, no, that's definitely a self-portrait. Yeah. So he denied something, yeah. where the others admitted something. Someone from Swellborough Council has presumably admitted something. That they worked with for Swellborough Council. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they yeah. had no further ambitions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got it. They've all embarrassed themselves at work, apart from Lucian Freud, who embarrassed himself with his work, because a painting of a standing male nude was reported to be a self-portrait of his, but Freud repeatedly denied being the artist. Mm. I like that. Could do with some pyjamas on him. But... <laughs> Experts have now authenticated the painting, and it's one of Freud's and it's believed he might have denied painting it because he found it embarrassing. The controversial artist is rumoured to have fathered 40 children, although only 14 have been officially identified as his. And here he is at work. <laughs> <laughs> World champion snooker player Mark Williams fell asleep in his chair. Where have the tops of his fingers gone? <laughs> <laughs> Mark Williams hasn't always been quite so boring. How did he spice up a press conference in 2018 after winning the World Championships? It was something about dancing naked or something. He did the conference in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> so why should we be grateful he didn't win in 2019, then? Because they didn't have a table. <laughs> <laughs> he was standing up and using the table as a rest. <laughs> <laughs> the Australian TV host Matt Doran embarrassed himself at work recently. Since the incident, right. Matt has issued a blubbering apology, and as a result, he's now favourite to be the next Australian cricket captain. <laughs> <laughs> a junior employee at Swale Council in Kent accidentally sent out five planning rejections and approvals recently, along with some sarcastic explanations oh. as to why they had made <laughs> that decision. Oh, that's good. Transparency in local yeah. government. <laughs> <laughs> the junior employee thought they were resolving a software issue by answering dummy applications, but they were accidentally published, making them legally binding. <laughs> One of the applications that was accidentally rejected was for the charity The Happy Pants Ranch. <laughs> the employee rejected the proposal with the reasoning, your proposal is whack. <laughs> Followed by a second reason stating, no, mate, proper whack. <laughs> Father Christmas also made an embarrassing mistake whilst giving an interview on Radio York. 
you enjoyed coming to all of these places? I'm sure that you don't get to visit places like Rydale very often. Oh, I live in Ryde. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I live in uh, wherever Santa Claus lives. But yes, we come to Rydale every year. Time now for the Missing Words Round, which this week features as its guest publication, Demolition Hub, the magazine for the UK demolition industry. It's an emotional read. By the end of it, you'll be in bits. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with, scientists have developed what to work out if your cat is what? Is it a test to work out if your cat is Schrodinger's? <laughs> Scientists have developed a reincarnation meter to work out if your cat is Mussolini in a previous life. <laughs> Pussolini. <laughs> Scientists have developed a questionnaire to work out if your cat is a psychopath. <laughs> Next. Demolition Hub publisher sad to announce what? Closure of magazine after one issue. Sad to announce that readership numbers are building. <laughs> <laughs> Demolition Hub publisher sad to announce he will not be attending World of Concrete this year. <laughs> Is that like Peppa Pig World? <laughs> yes, the World of Concrete show usually takes place on the 8th of June, although that's not set in stone. <laughs> <laughs> Next, subscribers to Demolition Hub to receive free what? Counselling. <laughs> <laughs> subscribers to Demolition Hub to receive free copy of Asbestos Hub. Oh, that's when you're desperate when you're giving away sister magazines, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Though I am open. <laughs> Next. Ancient sport of what sent to return in 2020? Oh, I read this. Ancient sport of getting as many twos into a year. <laughs> Is it uh, coughing at the theatre? <laughs> <laughs> Ancient sport of shin kicking set to return in 2022. Yeah, the Shin Kicking World Championships will return to the Cotswolds in 2022, thanks to a £5,000 grant from the council to rescue the dying tradition. Shin Kicking has been a staple in British sporting history with some lifelong competitors, such as Roy Keane <laughs> and Graham Sunes. <laughs> Next. Part of what being used as a coffee table in New York? Part of Jacob Rees-Mogg's charisma being used <laughs> as a coffee table in New York. <laughs> Part of Caligula's dance floor being used as a <laughs> coffee table in New York. Well, is that the original Caligula? Well, a Roman mosaic that once formed part of the floor of one of Caligula's party ships has been found being used as a coffee table. That's well, I know who will be snapping that up. Cafe Nero. <laughs> <laughs> Next, the president of the National Federation of Demolition Contractors' ultimate dream is to what? Destroy the world! Retire quietly. <laughs> <laughs> Win Michelle Pfeiffer a raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Getting there. Uh, the president of the National Federation of Demolition Contractors' <laughs> ultimate dream is to drink rum whilst looking at a puffin. <laughs> Well, what's the puffins' dream, though? <laughs> this is from Demolition Hub. They also publish a funny comic version called High Viz magazine. <laughs> Next, Stonehenge builders fuel themselves on what? Cheap cider. Mm. Pin-ups of Bodicea. <laughs> <laughs> it was snacks. They archaeologists have found a load of buried sweetmeats. <laughs> Just suggests they were treated well and they had breaks. I mean, it wasn't like Amazon or something. <laughs> You're pretty, pretty close here, pretty close. Stonehenge builders fuel themselves on Neolithic mince pies. Oh. After recent excavations near Stonehenge, archaeologists have suggested builders may have been making mince pies. The mince pies are believed to be 4,500 years old, so they should still be OK till next Christmas. <laughs> The Guardian printed a Neolithic mince pie recipe which starts, step one, preheat oven to 190, <laughs> fan or gas mark five. 
Step two, wait 3,000 years for oven to be invented, then pop them in. <laughs> and finally, teddy bear spotted in Susanna Reed's what? Oh, it's one of those things. Hair, uh, bedroom, wallpaper, no. esophagus. I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> it's woods. Dreams. Woods? Woods. The, the teddy bear was spotted oh. in Susanna Reed's woods, which was a big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Teddy bear spotted in Susanna Reed's knee. Oh. Viewers of GMB claim to have spotted an image of a teddy bear in Susanna Reed's knee. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean. To be fair to Susanna, her knee only looks like that after repeatedly kneeing Piers Morgan in the bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Why, has he got teddy bear shaped bollocks? <laughs> Would you like to see more examples in the Sun's gallery of celebrity needs? I'd fight anybody and stop me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, well, here's the Duchess of Cambridge. What's in her knee? Oh, that's Boris Johnson. <laughs> no, it's Casper the Friendly Ghost. Of course. <laughs> here's Meghan Markle's. Again, what's in her knee? Oh, um... Oh, that's Lord Rothermere. <laughs> It's the Elephant that. Man. <laughs> oh. Oh. No. Sorry, looking at those two pictures, I've got confused. Which one is her knee again? <laughs> <laughs> so the final scores are Ian and Camilla have three points. Oh, Paul and Miles have five oh, points. That's no. But before we go, there's just time for the caption competition. What actually is it? I think it is a pepper pot, or oh, he's very pleased to see. <laughs> Did you get this on Grinder? <laughs> <laughs> Next. Ah, oh, Robin. Now I know why they call you the Boy Wonder. <laughs> <laughs> on which note we say thank you to our panelists. What on the note of Robin giving Batman a blowjob? <laughs> And you were having a go at Miles earlier. <laughs> it's the end of the show. I built up to it. I didn't start there. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm a reformed character. Yeah, he's a yeah. reformed character. <laughs> On which note we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Camilla Long, Paul Merton and Miles Jupp. And I leave you with news that, after realising that the Vatican would benefit from selling toys at Christmas, the Pope reveals the design of the Catholic Church's official version of Operation. <laughs> He's got the same hat as Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> At the launch of the band's new single, there are fears that two years of lockdown have not been kind to the sugar babes. <laughs> <laughs> and in London, one man goes on a spending spree after guessing his mother's pin number. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>